All right, so this thread from Joe Laverick, who is a promising under 23 rider, strong on the time trial, and um, it's all about basically the National 10 Mile TT Champs. It happened on the weekend, John Archibald won it. And we're just gonna go through this, this uh, thread about time trialing, how much faster he could have gone, uh, and sort of look into, is time trialing super elitist, or can anyone get round? So this is his setup. I'm gonna sh shred it and roast it in a minute. But we'll go through for his. So it was an out and back V714, uh, like, you know, rolling, but basically pan flat. John Arthur did 1753, which is like 54k an hour. He did 1908, which is like 52k an hour. You can see his power data here. He did 414 watts at 70 kilos. So we crunched the numbers on that. Uh, it is what, like 5.7 for 20. So pretty decent to be fair. Uh, but not like bonkers, but obviously it's what's for CDA that matter. So you can see here, he's been to the wind tunnel, which to be fair is pretty large. Um, he reckons his CDA is about 0 0.207, which to be honest, is not very good. I'm not going to lie. Um, you know, it's definitely not not unreal. Uh, for a smallish guy as well, I'd say it's not top. Dan Biggins 0 0.15, 0 0.17. So you can see here to win... He has to do 500 watts on the same equipment, so that's position. Now, that's obviously not happening. 0.168 CDA and produce same power. That's more possible or have a 0.19 CDA and then do 460. Well, realistically, you're not going to do 460, are you, big man? Because that means you would be very much well taught. So you've got to get the CDA down to 0.168. Um, equipment here, this is where we're going to roast it in a minute. Uh, and then basically he just says that it's an arms race. You need to be super idle. Um, you need sort of 7K of kit. He also says most amateurs have better set up than world tours um, because, you know, they're keen. But the question is, is sort of, is it elitist or the rest of it? Well, we're going to look at his setups here. So, well, number one, and, you know, it's my pet, pet peeve, is uh, the SRAM drivetrain. It's like three to five watts, people reckon, compared to Shimano, because it's a flat top. You know, he's probably on, did he say his chainring daya? Because it's probably not big enough. He was on a, a 52. I mean, that's tiny. You need a 60, big man. So then you'll be on like 13, 14. That will definitely help. Skin suit, I mean, it's probably not great. Uh, it probably could be quicker. Um, handlebars probably saves a little bit there, to be fair. Oh, you don't have a wax chain. If you do want a wax chain for TTs, link in the description. I sell them uh pirelli p0 race like those tires are so bad we're gonna have to get our bicycle and rolling resistance.com like now because they are some of the worst tires i have ever seen on the bicycle and rolling resistance so we'll, we'll just get quick on the road bike sorry this video is, is carnage um so p zeros so like he's on let's say on a course of speed we're talking like seven watts uh, you know it's a it's it's okay the pirelli's the Pirelli P0 Velo TT is four watt, like three watts slower, right? And he's not even on them. He's on the P0 race. I mean, he's just throwing away watts. So this is the thing is like, you know, the P0 Velo race is 11.7. He might not even be on the TLR uh, stuff. So minimum 4.7 watts per wheel. That's 10 watts down. Five watts on the dry train, uh, like with wax chain and SRAM, maybe a bit more. Could be like, let's say... 15 watts to be kind but i think it could be up to 17 watts so like big man this is where your issues are and obviously he can't change it he's a sponsored athlete but nonetheless that is a big issue for the man uh and he's not going to overcome that 17 watts is a lot so he was saying he needed 460 with the cda of 0.19 well big man i found you 17 so now you only need 440 and that's like you know still a lot but there's probably more gains to be had um, so anyway, John Archibald and Michael Gill didn't pose that power there. Uh, well, I don't know why, a bit lame to be honest. But you can see some of these other guys doing significantly less watts. And this is what I'm talking about. He's did 410 watts. Okay, he's probably not as slippery as some of the people because George Pennon is, is a very slippery man. But this bloke, he's quite big, but obviously very slippery. This lad, again, seventh, he is he is a slippery man. He's got a lot of watts as well. Like he's a He's quite small as well, but... 5.6 again, so it's not like he's, you know, absolutely tiny. If we sort of approximate CDA to watts, uh, sorry, watts per kilo to sort of watts per CDA, it's not a great approximation, but it, it can be done. Um, so anyway, 
that is my conclusion is that his equipment is really the the big issue here um we can look at the results uh will there even be results on this website though? this is the question um the ctt website uh, no, that looks like it could actually be the results um which is pretty mad they're up that quickly yeah so like you can see the people we're going chris fennel didn't post in strava normally he does he does a lot of what's to be fair um but you can see richard bustle 1853 uh, well, and uh, my other man, George Pennington, 1906. So he beat Joe Laverick and did 25 watts less. So I think that is a key sort of consideration for people to realize is that some of your equipment choices are very, uh, very big. Um, I assume these are tubeless if he doesn't say it's a latex. So basically, what could he save on? Not having 28 mil tires, probably, it's probably going to save you a little bit. Decent course of speeds, not axis, have a normal fast 12-speed chain. Have a bigger chain ring that will save you some chain. Uh, send it to rapid wax chains to get it waxed. That could save you some. And then, you know, the rest is like a skin suit is like, you know, you could probably get quicker. But he is leaving a lot open. So he does say £7,000 for the rider. But there are some easy low hanging fruit that the big man could sort out. Um, so, yeah, that, those are my conclusions. RTT super elitist. Yes and no, like they are. But there's also some low hanging fruit that people can sort out. Um, I do think you need probably an 80 mil front wheel, a disc, an okay time trial bike, aero helmet, skin suit to be competitive, which is a lot of coin. I'm not going to lie. It is a lot, but I don't think this is elitist as he's saying. I think he just doesn't have optimal positioning. Uh, sorry, not positioning, just equipment choice, but obviously it's sponsor, um, issued. So it is what it is. But anyway, hope you did enjoy this video and I'll see you in the next one.